With the crypto market still down around 17% on the year, the big question is, where is the market headed next? Is there still more pain and bigger drops to come? Or have we already hit the bottom? And is the crypto market set for a breakout? Now, so far, 2022 has given some serious headwinds in the financial markets. We've had red hot inflation, interest rates about to hit, and a war breakout in Europe. So all in all, it does make it very challenging and difficult to know where the market is going next. Having said all that, after doing some research, I'm going to show why I remain optimistic about where we go from here. And so in this video, we'll be looking at the technicals, so what are the charts saying right now? Then we'll take a look at the data and see how have the markets performed in times of war and crisis in the past. And then we'll finish up with the latest big developments going on in the crypto market right now. As always, if you do enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like, always appreciated. Okay, first up, we'll take a look at a couple of charts and we'll see if the outlook is bearish or bullish. Ready? Uh, let's do this. And so starting off with a good old Bitcoin price chart, and I've put in some key levels of resistance and support. So the first thing to point out is that the bigger trend of setting new all time highs is intact. So as long as each time there are new higher highs, and when it does crash, it needs to be higher lows. So you'll notice in this big crash here in May, this next time that it's crashed, it's still above these levels. So this is technically still a higher low than before. So with a higher high and a higher low, then the bigger overall trend for me is still intact. And let's go through these lines. So top line is just the top level resistance. This level here, which is around the early 40s, seems to be a key level of resistance as well. And we've traded inside this channel quite a few times, and this is where we're at right now. And when it comes to support, there seems to be a major support line around about the $30,000 mark. And most recently, you can see we are still quite a way above it. But if this breaks, then this is why lots of people are calling for this $20,000 mark. And this was the previous all time high of the last big bull market. And so the main thing for me I'm looking at is that as long as we stay above this $30,000 mark, I would say the bigger overall trend is still intact. And the next chart we're going to take a look at is the liquid supply of Bitcoin as a percentage. So what is a liquid supply? Well, this is when people are taking their coins off the exchanges and it's going into cold storage. So another way to look at this is the long term holders are increasing. So the chart that we looked at here was the most recent crash and what we're going through right now. And this is the price which is overlaid in the background here. And then in blue is our illiquid supply. So you can see as it peaked out here in May 2021, it hit 76%. Yes, we did get this initial crash as people move it onto exchanges and out of cold storage. But what we're looking at here is that since then, and even after this most recent crash, illiquid supply continues to be going up. So this is definitely another bullish sign. So long term holders are increasing and it looks like this last big sell off was more of the newer coins and newer entrants being shaken out of the market. So again, I would say this is another bullish sign. Next, we'll take a look at how the markets perform in times of war and crisis. So this was research done by LPL Research, and they put together all the different crises and wars that were happening. We've got 9-11 in here, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and even Pearl Harbor. And they looked at the S&P 500, and we've got what the total drawdown was, how many days it took for the market to bottom, and also how many days it took the market to fully recover. 
And what was really interesting and quite surprising to me is that the average total drawdown was only 5%. It took about three weeks for the market to totally bottom out. And then by six weeks, it was pretty much back in the positive. So quite surprising data. And it looks like the geopolitical events, there seems to be an initial hit, but then it's not as bad moving forward. And lastly, there's also some data done by Vanguard. And again, they looked at the Cuban Missile Crisis. We've got the Soviet when they invaded Afghanistan. They've got the Iraq War. And what they found as well is that geopolitical sell-offs are typically short-lived. And they found, again, you get this big initial sell-off. I guess it's when things are most uncertain. But then after only six months, on average, the market was back in the positive by 5%. And then just one year later, it's up almost 10%. So the data to me again looks very positive. And then we'll finish up with some latest developments in the crypto market. First up, Charles Schwab is the latest ETF heavyweight to propose a new crypto fund. And if you didn't know, Charles Schwab is another mega investment titan, has $7.5 trillion of assets under management, and they are one of the big four. The others being Fidelity with over 4 trillion, we've got Vanguard over 7 trillion, and actually the number one is BlackRock, and they've got about 8 trillion. Not sure why Google showing Edward Jones at only 1.7, but hey, come on Google. But more recently, we had BlackRock saying they're getting into crypto. We've had Fidelity getting into crypto. We've now got Charles Schwab getting into crypto. So only one of the mega titans being Vanguard is still yet to pull the trigger. Next up, payment giant WorldPay has joined a crypto compliance network. And this is huge as it's one of the biggest payment networks in the world and they are integrating with crypto. And then we have another billionaire admitting he was wrong about Bitcoin and his investment company, Citadel, it's a multi-billion dollar company, is now getting into crypto as well. And then as a bit of a bonus, we have one of the huge sporting brands, Puma, changing their name on Twitter to Puma.eth. So how is this for just advertising for crypto going out to almost 2 million followers? And just remember guys, with everything going on in the background, crypto adoption is still growing at a crazy pace and still keeping pace with internet adoption. So the demand going on in the background is ever increasing. So as mentioned at the beginning, the crypto market is still down about 17% on the year. However, considering the market jumped up 15% in a single day just recently, then think about it. We're only about one or two great days from being back in the positive. And considering everything that's going on right now, that is pretty damn good. From a technical point of view, the bigger trend of setting higher highs and higher lows is still intact. And the illiquid supply, as more people are moving their coins from exchanges and into cold storage, more people are becoming hodlers. And this indicates that the big drop and sell-off that we saw was more the newer coins, the newer entrants in the market, and this has probably now been shaken out. The data on how markets react during times of war and crisis was very surprising. It typically showed there's a big drop in the beginning, which is the time of maximum uncertainty. And then on average, it bottoms out after about only only three weeks and then it's back in the positive after six weeks and the developments in crypto just keep coming in thick and fast so much that it's really hard to keep up with the three highlighted was the 7.5 trillion dollar mega investment whale charles schwab finally getting into crypto and this now just leaves vanguard of the top four mega titans that are yet still to get involved the world's largest payment processor, WorldPay, has now joined a crypto network and another billionaire has admitted he was wrong and is now taking his own multi-billion dollar company and getting into crypto. 
And for these reasons, this is why I remain bullish on the crypto market. However, just now, whenever I talk about something that could potentially break out or explode, I always have a one year minimum time frame in mind, as anything less than that is more trading and not investing. As much as I would love my videos to mark the exact bottom of the crypto market every single time, the reality is that this will rarely be the case. And the truth is that the next day or week or month, as crypto can jump up or crash down 15% in a single day, it makes it virtually impossible to know where it's going in the short term. However, in the medium to long term, I think the outlook is looking great. And the next bull run in crypto is going to be epic. So there you are guys, hope you enjoyed. Tell me, are you bullish or bearish with everything going on right now? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed, click below and join us. Got some great videos coming up that you don't wanna miss. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.